Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryan here and in today's CCNA and CCNP Route 5 Minute Video Boot Camp I've got an OSPF hub and spoke checklist for you and also an unrelated lab tip that I'm going to show you right at the beginning uh, and it happened when I was actually setting up for this particular lab. So we'll go over that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and start our clock. Now with hub and spoke configs, you know, we've got some details to watch out for, but of course that's true with everything with OSPF. Because those of you just getting started in your CCNA studies, you know, you go through RIP and static routing and EIGRP, and certainly those all have some details. But then you hit OSPF and it's wham! You know, you got all these LSAs and you got all these areas and you got you know, multiple kinds of stub areas, all kinds of stuff you got to be concerned with, and it can be a little overwhelming at first. It's also vital that we know for both the NA and the NP route exam, not just the commands that are needed, but where they're needed. What config mode we need to be in, which routers need them, and which routers don't. And that all comes into play here in a typical OSPF hub and spoke network. We've got something very simple and straightforward here, but we're going to see all these details in action on both the hub and the spoke. So let's go ahead and bring the live equipment up. And here's that unrelated lab tip that I mentioned previously. Now, I had just created another OSPF video for the YouTube channel. And what I like to do is really start from scratch on this video. So I removed OSPF from the routers, but whenever you do that or you're coming back to a practice lab that you haven't looked at for a few minutes or a few days, it doesn't matter which, always make sure that the protocol you think you removed, you've actually removed. Because I'll have students email me once in a while or catch me up in Twitter and Facebook and say, you know, I did this lab and I got all these rip routes showing and, you know, the ADs look a little off, etc. Well, they forgot they had another protocol running or some static routes running. So it only takes a minute at the beginning of your lab time to run show IP protocols. Here I ran show IP OSPF just to make sure that all the OSPF instances were gone. But that little 15 or 20 seconds that you take to do that can save you literally hours of troubleshooting. So let's go ahead up to router 1, which in our lab is the hub. Now, we know that we want the hub to end up being the designated router for this segment, hub and spoke, and we don't want the spokes to ever become the DR even if the hub goes down. So we're not going to do anything about that on router 1 because router 1 serial 0 interface, which is the interface that's in this OSPF network, uh, that has a default priority of 1. All of our interfaces do, by the way, when they're enabled with OSPF. So we're going to leave that at 1, but what we do need on our hub in an NBMA network such as this is neighbor statements. So I'm going to go ahead into my OSPF config here, and first I'm going to put the actual network. And remember, that's not enough. Wildcard bits are required in OSPF. What else is required here at the end? the area and then finally the ID and we're going to put them all in area 0. Now I need one neighbor statement for each one of my neighbors and again this is on the hub and there we go. So we're all set there. Now we're going to go down to the spokes and before we even start that OSPF config what we're going to do is disqualify this spoke interface which is also S0 from becoming the designated router or the backup designated router for that segment. And we do that with a command IP OSPF priority 0. Very important to remember, it goes on the interface. And you can see we can set it from 0 to 255. That number should sound familiar by this point in your studies. And we set it to 0. Now we're going to go over to router 3, the other spoke, and do the exact same thing. Now we can actually start the OSPF config. I could have done that on 2, but didn't do it. But I can go back and do it. And again, router OSPF1 network. 72.12.123.0. Let's run show IP OSPF neighbor on router 1. And you can see these timers are going to go almost all the way down to 0, which is going to take us right to the 5 minute limit. So we're actually going to step away from this for a moment because I've got this checklist for you on the board. Then we'll come back here and I will prove that those interfaces went up. So let's head over to this review board that I've got here for you. On the hub, 
we want to keep the interface at the default OSPF priority of 1, but we'll need the neighbor command, one for each, each neighbor. And as we saw, that goes under the router OSPF config, not on the interface. Let me go ahead and close that off. Now the spokes, we set the interface OSPF priority to 0. Because it's not enough to make sure that hub interface wins the election, we have to disqualify the spoke interfaces entirely. And that command goes on the interface, and you know that's IP OSPF priority 0. Let's head back up to the live equipment, and you can see that exactly what we thought would happen has happened. The neighbor adjacencies are up. If you're wondering about these router IDs, uh, make sure to check my YouTube channel. I just put a video up here explaining that and going over that checklist as well. But you can see they've gone from loading to full. We'll run show and everything is just fine. So again, there's your hub and spoke checklist for an OSPF NBMA network. Thanks for watching today's video boot camp at least five times a week and usually six. There's a new Cisco or CompTIA skill for you to learn in five minutes or less. Thanks for watching.